The following episode of Murphy contains violence and strong language. Murphy, created by Alexandra Monroe. Episode 1. There are very little things that scare me nowadays. I think it might have something to do with my line of work. Maybe I'm numb to a lot of things. But I've always been terrified of the water. The thought that 80% of our ocean is unexplored baffles me. What secrets are below the waves? What are we diving into? I nearly had an episode before I left home, barely breathing as I walked out the door. Detective Inspector Andrew Marino, my boss, called me about a body that was found near the beach. It felt like a sick choke when he asked me to take the lead. But I chose to be here. Morning, Jack. Little late today, are we? Morning, Elliot. What's the story here? Right on to business, I see. Well, the poor bloke is 65-year-old Graham Lawrence. Lived right on the water. Wife. No kids. Looks like he came at the right time, too. Marino's gonna be packing us up in a bit. Why's that? He can't find any other explanation for Lawrence's death, so he's ruled it a suicide. He's up for review, isn't he? Aye. He didn't even bother calling forensics. If he already knows what happened, why bother making me lead? Less paperwork on his end, I guess. Go and have a look. I looked over at D.I. Marino. He was standing over the body with his hands on his hips, like the detectives in those crime dramas. I often think he has this job because he's watched too many of them. There was another young man standing near him. He was tall, slender, and riding on a notepad. I'm not even in the water, and I feel sick. Sherwood, you're late. Here we go. Morning, sir. Any reason why you're late? Bit of traffic this morning, sir. It's 8 a.m. on a Sunday. Right. Anyway, did O'Donnell catch you up? Yes, sir. I heard you called it a suicide. Graham Lawrence was face down on the ground. The young man next to Marino continued to scribble. That's what it is, Sherwood. No other reason for a man to take his boat out to the water in the middle of the night. Spoke to his wife earlier. She confirmed he left their bed around three this morning. Ugh, my apologies. Sherwood, this is Samuel Turner. He transferred over from Ipswich, and he's looking to become a detective. Pleasure. Likewise. I look forward to working with you, Detective Sergeant Sherwood. Call me Jack, please. Uh, All right, now that the pleasantries are over, let's get out of here. I'm seasick. Taylor, I'm going to have you go along with Sherwood and O'Donnell. Yes, sir. May I still inspect the body, sir? Why? I just want to make sure I got everything. There's no need, Sherwood. Let's go. Would you help me with this? I thought Mr. Marino wanted us to... Don't worry about him. Come on. Oh, oh, blimey! Now this is interesting. The man's throat had been ripped out. As I looked closer, I noticed a needle-like object in his neck. I picked it out with a pair of tweezers. What do you think that is? I'm not sure. Looks like a tooth of some sort. Maybe something got to him? Excellent observation, detective. Right. Whatever it is, I'm going to hand it over to forensics. And Samuel? May I call you Sam? Sam? Let's not tell Marino about this. Uh, Yes, sir. Uh, Why, sir? Marino can be a bit of a knob. He just likes to close cases. I'm sort of in it for the mystery. (laughs) 
Do you know what I mean? Uh, y yes, sir, but um, he's the boss. Should he know? They'll only get in the way. You want to be a detective, don't you? Uh, yes, sir. All right. Follow my lead, then. Sometimes you have to bend the rules a bit, especially under Marino. Come on, Elliot's going to lose his mind if we're here any longer. He likes his coffee, that one. It's going to be rather difficult doing this investigation with the new guy breathing down my neck. Seems nice, though. Good kid. Oi, Jack. Yes, Elliot? Marino's really given us the new guy. I bet he'll regret wanting to work here. <laughs> uh, I can't believe we're being trusted with him. Me either. Considering you're such a troublemaker. Eh, quite right. Anyway, I've been instructed to bring this to you. Marino found someone poking around Graham Lawrence's party. Wonderful. Everything's in that file. She's got an unusual name. While you're doing that, I'm going to teach the new guy about her filing system. Drinks on you if he falls asleep in the first five minutes. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm Detective Sergeant... Jack Sherwood. After all these years. Merlin Murphy? Yeah, I know. It's weird, right? Well, what are you doing here? Well, I'm really into architecture, and I thought I'd check out this building. No, no, no. I meant here, in York. Vacation? A little rude to not look me in the eyes, old friend. Let's just get this over with. What were you doing at the... Hold on. This is Detective Sergeant Jack Sherwood with Merlin Murphy. Jess Murphy, please. Uh, Murphy, it is the 5th of July at 1 o'clock in the afternoon. According to this, you are obstructing a crime scene. Wow, that's what they said I was doing? What did you think you were doing? I was just taking a walk. I found the body. I wanted to make sure he was okay. So, you walked over to the body? Yes. And you touched him? I like to think I touch a lot of people. Murphy, that's what obstructing a crime scene is. I didn't change anything. I only wanted to check it out. Right. I need to tell you something. Off the record. What? You can't just... Can we please resume? Sure we can. Jack, listen. I know that you found something on the body. How? Because... I did too. What is that? It's a scale. Since we're playing show and tell, why don't you show what you found? I... I did find something. I'm not really sure what it is. Well, where is it? I... sent it over to forensics. Good on you for following the rules. Just doing my job. Something tells me you think there's more to this investigation. I overheard some uptight asshole saying it was just a suicide. That uptight asshole is my boss. Wow, I'm sorry. For you, I mean. Anyway, most people, if they want to drown, fill their pockets with rocks, tie themselves to a weight of some sort, basically make it impossible to get back to the surface. Right? Right. So why, when you found Graham Lawrence, did he have nothing attached to him, no rocks in his pockets? Not to mention, his throat was ripped out. In my line of work, I've never met anyone capable of doing that. I'm sure you haven't either. I think there's a padlock in our way. And that thing in your hand is the key to all of this? Could be. If you can get your hands on whatever it is you found again, I'd like to take a look. Here's my card. I'll let you know if I do. We can resume, Detective Sergeant. I think I've... I think I've gotten everything, Murphy. It was nice to see you again, Jack. Good to know you're still the same. You too. My memories of Merlin Murphy are like a topple jigsaw puzzle. I've been looking for the pieces all over, but after a while I gave up. 
There was no use in putting it back together. I read over her card. Murphy, it said. Then listed a phone number. Two, actually. One was a UK number, and the other, I can only assume, is a US one. How do I reconnect with someone I remember so little about? And that scale she had with her. What did it all mean? I've managed to get myself to the edge of the water, watching the waves barely touch my shoes. Calling me, desperately trying to pull me in. The water is actually quite calm. What if I just... Solid ground. Your own solid ground. You're not drowning. Okay. We're okay. There's something moving in the water. It looks like gold coins from here. Part of me feels that I've made the right decision by not handing the tooth over to forensics. A gut instinct. I also have a feeling I haven't seen the last of Merlin Murphy. I've done all the research I could on sea creatures that have needle-like teeth. The only problem is, they're all found in deep waters. The bay, where we found Graham Lawrence, isn't deep, but it isn't shallow either. I don't think an anglerfish would want to set up shop there. All right, Jack, I can't take it anymore. Did you also fall asleep learning the filing system? Yes, but that's not the point. I don't like this babysitting Marino is making us do. I like Sam. I like him too. I just don't know if I'm cut out to train him. He follows me around like a lost puppy. Well, I think you did a good job with me. Uh, I don't think so. What do you say we get a few after-work drinks, like old times? Mm, I might have to skip and just go home. Jack, you and I both know you don't have a life outside this station. I do. Reading and watering plants is not a life. It's a hobby. Come on, Jack. Either you need a drink or you need a girlfriend. All right. I'll take a drink for now. Don't go set me up with anyone. I thought Charlene was really nice. She was, but she was just a bit too old for me. Hey, 52 is not old. It is if I'm 30. Fair enough. Elliot and I took a booth in the back of the sailor's pub. A relic from the Second World War on the other side of the city. Not too many colleagues show face. Elliot is right. I would have gone home, made a cup of tea, opened up and then there were none, watered my plants, then went to bed at 10 p.m. Here you go, lad. Thanks. Oh, bloody hell, don't look now. I said don't look, you knob. Is that Sam? It's like he's got a radar. Elliot, he's allowed to be here. It's a public place. Yeah, yeah, but this is where we come to get away from work. Not have it follow us. Especially since I've had to handle him all day. He looks like he's with a friend. A girl sitting with Sam on the other end of the bar. Her back towards us. Brown hair, leather jacket. Wait a minute. That's Merlin Murphy. Who? Oi, where are you going? exciting most of the time. I have a very specific line of work. Jack! What are you doing here, mate? Hello, Sam. Murphy. Uh, You know this woman. Man, she's brilliant. Take it easy, Sam. What brings you here? I live nearby. I bought Murphy a drink and we decided to chat. He was telling me about that object you found, Jack. Sam, you can't go around telling people about... Don't! Hurry, Jack. I'm not telling the details. I was only curious. Besides, how often do you come across something like that? Sure, but... And it's not like I'm telling Marino. Right. But Sam Murphy is in police. You should be telling her anything about the investigation. How do you know you can trust her? Sounds like you can't trust me, Jack. 
I haven't seen you in 20 years. Of course I can't trust you. Ouch. Wait. So, you do know each other? I did. Childhood friends. Long story. Anyway, Sam, thank you for your input. I'll let you know what deep sea creatures made it into the bay. After I tell my editor about this discovery. Murphy, I swear... Jesus Christ, Jack, it's a joke. I don't work for anyone. These are knocking I didn't see. Just be careful who you talk to, Sam. Aye, aye, Captain Jack. Oh, and Elliot's here too. Blimey, it's a little work reunion. Mind if I sit with you both? Sure. Finally, a moment alone. One cup of tea before I head to bed. I took another look at the needle tooth as I sat in my chair. I fiddled with it in my fingers, feeling its smooth texture, its very sharp end. I set it down on an end table and drank my tea. Before I knew it, I began to drift off. I haven't had one of those in a while. The same nightmare with this girl's voice, always screaming my name. It's quiet tonight. Calm before the shitstorm, I guess. Merlin Murphy. After all this time. Hang on. I wonder... Ah! Here we go. All the memories of Merlin Murphy I have left. A stuffed dog, a card she wrote me, and... A bracelet. I held that for a long time, wondering what memories were woven into the colorful threads. Morning came, shining through my window and illuminating the room. The bracelet sat on my nightstand greeting me when I woke up. I got dressed for work rather quickly. When it came time to leave, I brought the bracelet out to my dining room, and I placed it on my table. I took out Murphy's business card and the needle tooth. I sat at all three objects for a long time, wondering if they're all connected You wanted to see me, sir? Ah, oh, sure would. Yes, take a seat. Close the door, would you? May I ask you what this... You do know that any evidence, no matter how insignificant it may seem, must be turned over to forensics. I'm aware, sir. So, could you explain to me why you've been withholding evidence? Like you said, sir, I thought it was... Insignificant. Do you realize how poorly this will reflect on me? When the superintendent finds out my detectives are keeping trophies, trophies, they will have my head on a platter. Now, please, whatever you've got on you, you might as well hand it over. Yes, sir. Thank you. While you're at it, turn over your badge. I'm putting you on a week's suspension. What? Don't make it two weeks, Sherwood. 
Hand over your badge, now. Yes, sir. Now get out. Oh, Jack, uh, you're all right. Not now, Sam. I-, I wanted to ask you about the Lawrence investigation. Did we ever consider there's a new species of fish in the Sam, bay? Sam, please. I know you're eager about all of this, but I need you to leave me alone. I can't help you with this anymore. How the hell am I supposed to put these pieces together now? Hey, Cracker Jack. Maffy? Tough day? No thanks to you. I've just got a bollocking. I've been suspended. You like causing trouble, don't you? Why the hell are you here? Twenty years later, you decide to show up? I told you, I'm on vacation. Oh, load of rubbish. It's a vacation of sorts. I could have you arrested. For what? You have nothing on me. Besides, you just got suspended. Just... tell me why you're here. Do you trust me? I don't know many people who call me Cracker Jack. That doesn't answer my question. Fine. I trust you. Can I buy you a drink? You might need it. We went back to the sailor's pub and sat a table away from everyone else. Neither of us were touching our drinks. What did you find at the crime scene? I thought we would catch up first. Oh, right. Um, what did you find at the crime scene? Uh, a tooth, I think. I don't know. It it was really thin and needle-like. You're right about that. It's a tooth. From a mermaid. Or a siren. They're the same, really. It's a common misconception. These are all my notes. I've been keeping track of sirens' swimming patterns. They like deep waters, where they can hide. I was down at the beach the other day, and that's where I heard her. And before you say anything, I'm sure it was a siren. Sirens lure their victims with their voices. I'm sure you know that. It's anything anyone knows about sirens. You think he was lured to the bay? I know he was. But I really want to know why she was in the bay in the first place. Sirens are tricky. They don't trust easily. There are so many families and groups, and they each have identifying songs. If I could figure out what song it is, I'd be able to talk to her. Murphy, this... This is a... a bit much. Honestly, I don't know if I believe you. I didn't think you would. How... do you know all this? You don't remember, do you? No. You don't remember anything about... my parents and what they did for work? No, I don't. Professionally, they're called cryptozoologists, but that just sounds really fancy and it's honestly a mouthful. Um, They hunt creatures that you may have heard about in books and blogs. These creatures are real. I study them. I I make sure they feel safe in the world. Is that why you're here? You're looking for... monsters? Monsters, cryptids, the third kind. Yeah, sort of. You always have? Yeah. Blimey. Glad we're catching up. Murphy, listen, I I want to believe you, but this, this, it's... I know. Go home and sleep on all of this. If you need me, give me a call. She left me her notebook. I took another look at it. The pages were filled with information and drawings of all kinds of creatures. Werewolves, sirens, lake monsters. Can't all be real. Can it? Nothing else seems to make much sense. Something killed Graham Lawrence, that much I know. But could it have really been a siren?
voice. Where's that coming from? It sounds like it's coming from... The bay. Oh my god, Murphy, where the hell did I put her card? Murphy was staying in a flat in a town just outside of York. I approached the door and hesitated. What if I was wrong? What if what I heard was all in my head? What if this is all some fever dream I've yet to wake up from? Good. You didn't get lost. Come in. Her flat was piled floor to ceiling with books, papers, and boxes. She had dishes in a sink and takeaway containers on a kitchen table. Murphy, this place is... I know, I know, it's really small. I was going to say a natural disaster. Hey, I like things a certain way. I haven't had a chance to organize anything yet. Some of the books she owned were older than we were. Much, much older. I need to talk to you about the siren. I heard something down at the beach tonight. What was it? A song. A melody, rather, but I heard it clearly. And you... didn't go towards it? No, I I called you. Huh. Why? Should I have been tempted? We need to get in contact with her. Find out why she's in the bay, and why she killed Graham Lawrence. How do we do that? I was thinking we should go down there tonight. Take a boat out and try to talk to her. We have to go on the water. Yeah? I don't know if I can do that. I, it's... Uh, it, it's nothing. You're afraid of the water. I, I wouldn't say afraid. I just don't like the water. How did you know that? We should get down to the beach. Right. Um, Murphy, this might be a bit weird, but... Could we stop by the station? They may not be too happy to see you. I don't care. All right. What for? I want to get that tooth back. Why? You want to remember the good times? Sort of. More like... I want to stick it to the man. Okay. We can stick it to the man, I guess. I never say no to sticking it to the man. Wait here at the front desk. And do what? Just wait. Lay low. Fine. Elliot? Elliot! What? Are you out of your fucking... Yes, 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 I am. But listen, I need your help with something. Whatever it is, I want no part of it. You're not dragging me down with you. Please, it's important. I just need you to grab something out of evidence for me. You had to come here to tell me that? You could have called me. You never call. I gave something to Marino yesterday. He's probably handed it over to evidence. And I need you to get it. What is it? It's a tooth. But it looks like a needle. I'll explain it all to you later over a pint, but right now, I need you to do this for me. All right, lad. But if I'm sacked for this, I'm telling everyone that you have a ficus named Margaret Thatcher. A risk I'm willing to take. Meet me at the front desk. Of course, Samuel Taylor was the one person besides Marino I was hoping to avoid. He was up at the front talking to Murphy. Shame about Jack, really. I kind of miss him. I guess he isn't here then. Thought he might be clearing his desk or something. <laughs> no, if Marino caught him here, he'd be toast. But is there anything I can do for you? No, but thank you. Oh, well, it seems a bit of a waste to come all the way out here then. What do you mean? Well, I'm just saying, Jack wouldn't have been able to figure it out. The Lawrence investigation, I mean. I'm 
sure he did his best, but I've told you that's not why I'm here. I just think there's something fishy about the whole thing. Tread carefully. Well, I guess I'll be on my way. It was nice to see you again, Sam. Likewise, Merlin. We have to go now. Did you get it? I have Elliot working on it. We should get back to the car. Wait up. Did you get it? No, the bloody thing is gone. What? Marino logged it into evidence this morning. But when I went back there, it was missing. Fuck. You think someone stole it? Yeah. And I have a pretty good idea of who would. Come on. We gotta go. Why the hell is Sam interfering with all this? I don't know, but it's beginning to freak me out. How does he just... appear? It's horrible, really. Um, hello. Uh, may I ask what this is all about? It's complicated. I know we haven't formally met Murphy, uh, but complicated is me middle name. There's nothing I can't handle. Trust me, we don't have the time. You ready, Jack? Yeah. Keep watch for us, would you, Elliot? Keep watch? For what? The seagulls? You all right? I... I still don't know how I feel about going on the water. You trust me, right? I guess I do. I'm not gonna let something happen to you. I promise. It's okay. I got you. Thank you. You sure you're okay? I'll be fine. It was like she was right next to us. I began to lean over to the side of the boat, staring into the dark, murky water. Ooh, all right, that, that's enough. Feeling brave, are we? <laughs> I guess.
I'm all right. <coughs> I'm a, I'm a friend. How do you know the song of Irene? I told you, I'm a friend. I can help you. I don't require your help. We'll guide you back to deep waters where you can hide. You've already killed someone. We kill to stay hidden. If someone else sees you, you'll die. I can't risk that. Please let me help you. Why would a human want to help me? My people have suffered at the hands of your kind who got too bold and too brave. The last time I trusted a human, I was almost skinned and scaled. We won't do that, I promise. I still think you're a liar. Another siren, Ligeia, taught me your song. I saved her life a long time ago. I know sirens don't share their songs with just anyone. She trusted me. I only hope you'll do the same. Bloody brilliant! <laughs> Sam? You gotta be kidding me. <gasps> this is just brilliant. Sam, you need to leave. Why? So Sherwood can get the credit for this. You told Marino about the tooth. Well, that's right. I stole it from the evidence to conduct my own research. I couldn't find much at first, but I kept digging. Loads of people have come across Sara and sightings, but they can never prove anything. That is until today. Put down the spear, Sam. After this, I'll be the greatest detective in York. I'll be a bloody hero. Imagine bringing a Sara back home as a trophy. What do you care, anyway? I live without glory, Jack. Sam, please. <laughs> idiot, you've hurt her! I've got you. Is she alright? Can we save her? Murphy? The wound is too deep. I'm sorry. I, I'm so sorry. Murphy. I know that name. You're in danger. What? They're coming for you. Who? Who's coming for me? The judges. Stay with me, please. Stay with me. She's gone. We rode the boat back to the dock where we set a very shell-shocked Sam down. We passed out. Murphy insisted on giving the siren a burial, although burying a sea creature sounds a little weird. Nevertheless, we walked the beach and collected some shells. Murphy gently combed the siren's long, dark hair with her fingers, then placed the shells in her hand. We took the top from the boat and wrapped her in it. Together, we gently dropped the siren in the water. You can cross Fish Funeral off your bucket list. Is Sam going to be all right? I've got something for him. I guess you could call it an elixir of sorts. He'll forget everything when he wakes up, but yes, he'll be all right. Sam could have done more damage if he wanted. I was taught at a young age that monsters and people couldn't exist together. It's people like Sam who think of them as trophies rather than living things. Sometimes people are monsters. I learned that too. The siren. Who was she talking about? To be honest, Jack, I have no idea. You know, I could use you by my side. It'd sort of be like old times. <laughs> It'd be nice if I could remember those old times. You will one day, Cracker Jack. It'll come flooding back. But seriously, if you want to come with me, I can promise there'll be more than just sirens in the world. I'd have to think about it. You don't belong on the force, Jack. You know it, too. It's a steady job. You like doing things your own way. Marino's been holding you back. I'll think about it. Really. The sun's coming up. You better wake your friend. Murph and I made our way back to the car, where Elliot was fast asleep. 
I knocked on the window to wake him. <sighs> Did you find anything? I wasn't sure if I should say anything to Elliot, so I looked at Murphy. We found a new species of fish. Ooh, did you get a picture? Uh, no. I dropped my phone in the water. And so did Jack. Ugh, nice going. We could have been very rich. We? Yeah, I kept watch. You fell asleep. We don't have to tell anyone about that. It had been a week since our encounter with the siren and my suspension. Whatever Murphy had given to Sam seemed to have worked. Poor blow can't remember a thing. He was back to his usual self, following me and Elliot at our heels. This time round, I didn't seem to mind. It was actually a bit more pleasant. Elliot, however, was horribly confused. I couldn't stop thinking about Murphy. How intelligent she was, how there was so much more out there. I think I could do something worthwhile with her. Sir, could I have a word? Uh, I guess. I wanted to apologize for last week. <laughs> Don't act like you're sorry. I know you snuck back into evidence and stole it. For what reason? It was rubbish. Well, I still want to say sorry, but not for that. I beg your pardon? I withheld evidence because you are incompetent at your job. You make everyone around here feel horrible. You take nothing seriously. You care more about closing cases than drawing conclusions. And I have wasted so much time believing that I could do something good. I'm better than this. I don't work for you anymore, Detective Inspector. Best of luck to you. Shawwood! Shawwood! Jack, get back in here right now! Ah! Clearing out my desk didn't feel all that satisfying. It did feel great going back home, calling Murphy, and then meeting her at the sailor's pub. So I take it you're in? Yeah. I guess I am. I will warn you, it can get a little dangerous. There are worse people than Sam out there. Creatures even I have yet to encounter. I'm ready for whatever comes. Good. Murphy Episode 1 was written and directed by Alexandra Monroe as part of a series created by Alexandra Monroe. Featured in the cast were Emma Grace Myers as Merlin Murphy, Dan Vasquez as Jack Sherwood, Drew Burt as Elliot O'Donnell, Olivia Grady as The Siren, Francis Pache Nunez as Andrew Marino, and Lucas Yedman as Samuel Taylor. Also featured in the cast were Alyssa Alicio, Daniela Franceschetti, and Angela Strauman. Murphy was produced by Alexandra Monroe and Annie V. Music, sound design, and music supervision by Dennis S. Mowers. Songs featured in Murphy Episode 1 include Time or How Not to Catch a Ghost Red-Handed by Grenade Logic, 
Fucked Up by Rattleshake, and Speed by Rattleshake. Production and post-production were realized by Dennis S. Maurer's Music, LLC, in Brooklyn, New York. This is Alexandra Monroe.